Okay, so Pi News episode six. So the first thing up is uh, Twister OS had another update, uh, and it's actually had two since the last Pi News. Uh, so now we're on version 1.7, uh, and it auto updates because we know that's what it does now. Uh, so let's just minimize this. So uh, the theme Twister has had uh, a GUI added to it, so you can see it looks like this now, and you can actually see the theme much, much better. This is a really nice improvement. And iRaspbian Dark looks really nice there. Um, but uh, that's a really big improvement. And also, there's one thing, I'm not going to say the name of it, but uh, it's under the multimedia side. It is the bottom option here. But every time I mention it, I get a yellow dollar symbol. So I'm not going to say the name of it. Okay, so unfortunately, my channel had a, a violation. Uh, so if I click on the warning, uh, what it was, I did a video on Mac Buntu. And uh, one of the links in there, which was the one that was supplied to me uh, by the person who gave me the image, there was obviously something wrong with the site, so don't click on it. But um, because of that, I got a warning, so your content was removed due to a violation of our community guidelines. Because it's the first time your account isn't affected, you're only warned once, and this warning will remain on your channel. So if it happens again, uh, your channel will receive a community guideline strike and I won't be able to do things like upload, post or live stream for a week. So I have to be really, really careful now with any links I put in. I mean, I thought I was anyway. Uh, and I did click on the link and I went to it and there was a download there and it didn't look like there was anything untoward. But I guess at any time someone can change their page. So if you also do YouTube, just beware that this can happen. And although you can appeal, I've got nothing to really say. I, I put a link on my video and it was obviously to a dodgy site, but it wasn't my intention anyway. So uh, I'd just be super careful from now on. Now this is an interesting story, and this came up very recently. Uh, so Linux patch proposed to double Raspberry Pi 4 transfer speed to eMMC and SD storage. Manjaro Linux developer Thomas Schramm brought to light, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, that only single data rate mode is currently being used for micro SD cards and eMMC storage with Raspberry Pi 4 Model B SBCs but with a two-line kernel patch, the double data rate mode can be enabled. Now, I don't know where, if this will show up in the next Manjaro update or if it's already there, um, but I'd like to be able to get it on Raspberry Pi OS so I can use their speed tester. Um, so if anybody has seen the code that you need to put in there or if they've got it working with Raspberry Pi OS, I'd be interested. That looks like a free way of getting faster performance, uh, and then I can do a test between the SD rate and my very cheap SSDs that I generally use. Now, I had a comment from Grimwood Builds on, well, mine wasn't really a build, I just connected a, a battery to my screen and, and a controller. But I had a look at this video, and it's worth checking out, and I'll put a link in the description. It's only had 62 views, but it goes into great detail on this, and I won't, I won't Hello, play everybody. it, but I'll just sort of skim through the video so you can see the thumbnails but he's actually 3D printed uh, this casing and put in there, it's a Pi Zero, so I would I would rather go down the route of Pi 4, but obviously that makes it much, much bigger. But uh, it's, it's really impressive work, and it's really nicely presented, and he hasn't got a lot of subscribers, so I recommend it's one to watch, so it's worth having a look at, but yeah, that video is excellent, and it is just a really interesting build. And he goes into loads of details, and uh, and it's it's just really well presented. It is a great project. So next we've got, and I saw this everywhere. This Mac Mini, uh, this showed up on lots of different news sites and things. So uh, I guess this is using Twister OS with the the Mac theme, um, and he's got a mini uh, mouse keyboard combo. But it it obviously looks like an iMac. I hadn't realised that there's a proper video for this. So if I click on the casual engineer here on Reddit. Uh, it's obviously on YouTube, and I and I hadn't seen it, but I've, I've flicked through it, and he actually, well, actually, if I press play now, because I paused it right there, he actually shaves off a no bit Ethernet. of the USB, and again, I'm not going to show it, because if you're interested, obviously, you want to watch uh, the video that he shows it in, but uh, yeah, this is this looks really nice, uh, it's just some. it's a bit of fun, you know, it's not something you'd use, but it is a bit of fun, and I do like that sort of build with Raspberry Pi, and I like that sort of side of it. Really, really interesting. So again, I'll put a link in the description of that. But as you can see, it looks very cool, but you've probably seen it already if you see any Pi news, because it, it seemed to pop up in loads of different feeds that I had. And the last story, uh, and I, again, I'll put a link to everything in the description uh, if you want to read more of this, but how to make your Raspberry Pi 4 faster with a 64-bit kernel. 
Uh, now I asked about 64-bit operating systems in my Twister OS video because I use Twister OS which is a 32-bit operating system and I didn't really feel that I'd had any benefit or anything better from a 64-bit operating system. So in here, if we scroll down, this was the interesting bit, but it turns out there is a way to get some of the benefits of a 64-bit operating system but still keep the 32-bit user land so that all the familiar software will still work. It just works better. The plan is to update the Pi and tell it to use a 64-bit kernel. All the supporting software will still be 32-bit, but the code that manages memory and multitasking will be able to use the more powerful 64-bit. And so the writer of this blog uh, used uh, a little benchmark here where they... Uh, so just as a quick test, I tried to create a large file on the SD card, and uh, this, is the, this is the interesting information. So on average, the operation took about 104 seconds with the 32-bit kernel. With the 64-bit kernel, it only took 76 seconds. Certainly something to look at, and it may benefit some people. I'm still not too bothered at the moment, but, uh, but I'll keep watching this space. Okay, and a bit of breaking news. I just checked my messenger, um, and Salvador from PyLab sent me this. Uh, information where well, he basically sent me a link to a video and uh, it's this video by Nico D and uh, it's Windows games running on box 86 and he's got some really good performance on this and uh, so I won't again I won't as usual I won't play the video I'll link the video so you can find it for yourself um, but uh, he plays Quake 3 and it looks amazing uh, so there's Quake 3 uh, and the, the gameplay footage looks really fast and uh, there's a few other games that he plays on there. Um, but also, uh, it looks very, very easy. Now, I've, I've not done Box 86 for... I keep meaning to do it, but everything keeps cropping up in the Pi world. There's, there's so much to cover. Um, but I've got several games that I'd really like to play on it. So I must have a, have a look at this. Uh, but yeah, there's Commandos is in there as well. NASCAR is in there. I did NASCAR in a video. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if I got it running better or not in Dospian. But uh, I need to experiment and play around with it because the Quake performance was amazing. And Salvador mentions that uh, OpenGL games are the best performance uh, until we get Vulkan support on Box86. So, yeah, check out uh, Nico D. Have a look at that video. There's several games in there. There's also this game. I can't remember. I do remember this game and I can't remember what it's called. I need to have a look at it. It looks, again, it looks really fast. The gameplay looked decent. Okay, so yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, I'll be looking at Box 86 as soon as I can get around to it. Uh, I've got several games that I want to try and see how well it runs because it looks like it's much easier than I thought it was to run the games on it from this video. Anyway, uh, I hope this all helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.